Hi, it's Tony from Old River Hard Goods again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the techniques I use for restoring old edge tools. This one's called Chapter 1 because it's just kind of the basics. And when we get some other items that I want to get into a little nicer shape, we'll be doing a Chapter 2 and maybe Chapter 3. So, sit back and enjoy. Okay, for today's little lesson... I'm going to work on three different items. First is this old user-crafted, I guess it's a butcher knife. I don't do much with knives, but once in a while something interesting will come along, and I have a thing for these old user-crafted ones. Second is a draw knife. It's one of my Jacktown finds. Not sure who made it, but we'll talk about that in a bit. I do see a name kind of over there in the rust. And this plum hewing hatchet, which actually was a Jacktown find, but just didn't quite make it into the pictures. So, this is going to be where we're starting with, and we'll see how they turn out. First, a quick talk about the sandpapers that I use when I'm working on these tools. This is 100 grit. <clears throat> I buy these in strips from a guy at the flea market, where else, of course. Uh, this is 180, and he also sells the sheets of 400 wet dry, which I use for both dry and wet sanding. One of the things I do, of course, is look at just how crusty something is before deciding what kind of paper to use on it. In case of this knife, I'm going to start with some 180 grit, see what happens. Not pressing very hard. The goal here is just to kind of loosen the rust without scratching things up too bad. Now, if you watch my video on the tools I use at the shop, I have this brass brush. These were sold as lint removal brushes, but it works well for just knocking rust off. Also works well for brushing off the workbench. So we can see a little better what we're working with. There's some kind of a line here in the metal, whatever metal they use to make this with. So I'm going to take a little 400 grit and just give it another once over. Crusty stuff here.
obviously with a knife like this, the goal isn't to make it all bright and shiny again, just to get rid of some more of the rampant patina on it. And now it's time to take it over to the wheel. As I mentioned before, I don't show my wheel because I, it's, I'm running a completely open wheel, which isn't safe. But I am using just a fine wire wheel on a Keep Harbor Freight uh, grinder. Nothing fancy. But here it is after I ran it over. I actually did it twice. I brought it back and did a little more sanding because there was just some crusty. You know, sometimes the rust just melts off. Sometimes you really got to bear in there and give it the work over. So that's it for cleaning the blade on this guy. We'll do with the handles as we move on with things. So <clears throat> next up is the draw knife. Now, the first thing I always do with these is take it over to the wheel clean out wherever the mark is. reason I do that is because the wheel removes the rust evenly from the tool as well as the mark. If you sand, you run the risk of damaging the mark. And I've brought back some marks that were just about totally obscured that way. So be back in a couple of minutes. All right, well, the mark was on this side, not over there, but let me bring it up close. It's made by Merrill and Wilder, who were Hinsdale, New Hampshire edge tool makers who worked from around 1860 until 1901. So, having established that, and I will do a little sanding over that because it's kind of crusty there, time to break out the sandpaper and hit the rest of it. Start with the back. Be very careful around the edge. Paint there on the ferrule, and need to knock that off. Oh, back's not too bad for the most part. That's just where the money is. I'm going to use the 180 to cut some of the crusty over, or the 100 grit, cut, cut some of the crusty at the, on the frame. Some dings on the top of this guy, but not too bad. Something to watch out for <laughs> when you get them that are dinged up. All this one's not bad, is a lot of times you'll see cracks right in here. All right, flip it over to the side again with the 100 grit.
trust me that edge is now pretty sharp just doing that If they're really badly dinged up, I'll take a file and dress it down, but this one really doesn't need that. Now the mark area, I'm going to scratch around a little bit with the heavier paper, just to loosen some of the crusty up. A couple of light wipes with the with the 400 grit just to kind of break through some of that crusty there. I think I'll grab a file and just give that the once over. The way this is made is this is steel here and this is wrought iron, which is the way a lot of your draw knives were made until very late in the game. Alright, again this one's ready to go over to the wheel to see where we're at with it. Well, I got some more rust here, I gotta loosen up. see how she turns out here we are back from the uh, wire wheel note you have to be very careful when wire wheeling one of these guys because you definitely don't want that sharp edge getting kicked back at you heading for a, a shin bone or a knee been there almost done that but it's cleaned up fairly well I'm gonna have to do a little more sand and fine-tuning on it while I was back there I also started working on the ferrules and the end caps and you know they got some pitting but I'm not gonna worry about that back is where the real money is and it's pretty clean there's a line of rust right along where the steel back meets the iron frame but uh, I'm not gonna get 
too early concerned about that. This isn't going to be a hundred dollar draw knife by any stretch, but my whole goal with most of these tools is just to turn them back into to good solid users. Okay, next up is this old plum hewing hatchet. And it's got a couple pieces of the handle left in there, but kind of moves around, so pretty sure that's going to come out without too much aggravation, I hope. Yeah, that piece came out. That piece came out. No, I didn't try this before, but I felt around just to make sure. And this one, like the draw knife, somebody had a price painted on the back. I just wiped that off with some stripper. That's what the patch there is about. And again, this one I'm going heavy with, with the 100 grit. Uh, it's got some petting. This stage, I'm not overly concerned about sanding scratches because of everything else going on with this guy. Some kind of a user mark or something on the back. Normally I stand at the other end of the workbench, but I can't get enough good space to take videos what to do this. So Yeah, this one's got some pin, but I eh, will keep working on it. What the heck? In for a penny and for a pound. Somebody else had kind of excavated the plumb mark a little bit on this guy. Oh, surprisingly good. Usually these guys get pretty well bashed up. Yeah, some kind of user initials on it. Yeah, yeah this is not going to be the bell of the ball either, but...
switch into the 180. <laughs> Okay, now we're back here with the hewing hatchet. In case you're wondering, I spent oh, a good 10, 15 minutes uh, working this guy. Obviously, it's not going to be a thing of beauty, but what are you going to do? As far as cleaning the eye out, I always have a hunk of rolled up sandpaper kicking around. Then I just scratch in there a bit. Loosen up whatever's in there. And then I got this wire test tube brush. Run it through. Dust it out a bit. Not perfectly clean, but it's better than it was. Used to get these from an old guy at the flea market, but he's since passed on, so I'm gonna have to find another source from eventually. I got two sizes of them. This this is the bigger one and a smaller one that I use. And of course the back has some pitting on it. But again, we didn't go for perfect on this one. And back to the draw knife for a minute. While I was able to buzz off the ferrules a bit, it's kind of hard to get completely around them. So I just take a hunk of sandpaper. Sand them down. Also on the inside edge here that kind of hit with the wheel but didn't get real clean. Again, not going for perfect, just getting the and getting it a little closer where I couldn't get with the wheel without scuffing up the handles, which I try not to do, but does happen. Sorry if you can't see that. Again, this isn't exactly ideal working conditions for doing this, but sacrifices I make for you guys, eh? This falls in the uh, heading of detailing work.
and a little scratch around on the end caps. I am scuffing the handle a little bit, but that'll go away when I do the final clean in there. All right. This is where the real time goes in of working on one of these guys. Back to this. And here we have the de-rusting section pretty much done with. Now it's time to do some uh, refinishing work. All right. I'm going to start working on the handle here of the knife. Got my pot of, pan of stripper here, of course. Some steel wool. Rubbing down the rivets a bit. And again, I'm not going for perfect on this guy. I mean, it's just a primitive knife. You know, one rivet's copper. Yeah, probably not. The handle was made from a single piece, sliced and then riveted, rather than being two pieces of wood. Folks will ask me how old I think something like this is, and, you know, it could be 100, could be 150 years old. It's hard to say with some of these, uh, some of these early pieces. They don't exactly come with a family history or anything, so that's my guess. Throw the strip down off of it a bit. Uh, take the brass brush and... I'm going to scrub out these rivets a little. Let's see what I'm doing. Get some of the rusty off. I'm not really hurting the handle because I'm not pressing that hard. Just taking some of the funky off. Alright, then I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. Put that up here. And it's time to do the draw knife handles. And this is pretty much the same technique I use for everything. Now the handles are black walnut, which was pretty much the style for most of the New England makers of the day. Well, this one does have some paint on it. I hope it comes off. If not, we're going to have to get don't look like it's stripping, so.
course, there's those couple places where I might have bumped it with the wheel, but you really don't see those. Okay, here's a spot or something. Now that one came off. And of course, the stripper does darken it. And yeah, back to this bit of paint. Nope. That one's not budging, so. Oh, let's see what I got. It's really close here. It's not covered up real hard. Well, back in a moment, folks. With my Schrade old timer that I use for these such things. Now, normally I'd be sitting at the desk with my reading glasses on. But this one's not too bad. Yeah, whatever it is, it's definitely not enamel based. I hate paint. Came off. Put some of the patina back into it. Double check the other handle real quick. Make sure those spots I missed on there. Nothing worse than going to take a picture of something and finding out, oh, there's that one bit of paint you missed. Yep does happen and usually there's a lot of swear words involved but we won't go into that today since I'm trying to keep this PG all right well handles aren't too bad on this guy some dings but they're solid and on tight so all right so back to my knife here now, I'm going to move the stripper pan out of the way quick. Okay, back. Get that out of there. All right. Now, time for the wax. Now, normally, if I thought a tool like this was going to be used for food, I would not put the wax on it, at least on the blade, but... Since this is more of a collector piece than a user, I don't have too many qualms about it, especially seeing how it's going to protect it from hopefully rust anytime soon. I've mentioned this before with this wax. It's not waterproof, but it is water repellent. All right, get some paper towels here. Ooh, got a whole bunch of them coming down. Uh, yeah, just kind of rough there. Sorry if I keep wiggling out of range, but like I said, this ain't no $5,000 a week video production, so you get what you get. Although some people seem to think that I should be doing $5,000 a week video productions. But, all right, now for the draw knife. the handles and truth be told I normally don't do this with gloves on but in the interest of public safety and all that and I'm going to run some on the back here because of that pitting spot and up on the undersides there to kind of heal that off. Not my normal way of doing things, but if I don't like it, I can always dust it off quick. And it doesn't hide anything, that's for sure. I mean, you know, it makes the rust look black, and people can see that this thing isn't exactly a 
pristine example, but I say I don't worry about that. Life sucks and then you're an old tool, I always say. All right. And last up, of course, is waxing out this guy. I just picked up some, some of the rust that was floating around on the bench. Worked uh, some of the wax up in the eye. Again, forestall some of the rust. Usually, if I can fit my finger in there, I put my finger down. These gloves, it's a little trickier to do. Yeah, I can get pretty much in there. Sorry if it's flipping out, but all right. Alright, that's that. Wipe it down. And I use these same techniques on hammers, on chisels, Stanley planes, which we're going to do one of those sometime in the future. A uh, little different techniques, but And that's all for this one, folks. It went a little bit on the longer side than I expected, but considering I distilled ooh, two and a half hours worth of work down to 40 minutes, I guess it's not too bad. So no flea market segment this week. Uh, I got a few things there, but since this one's long enough and I've bored you long enough, time to call it a day. So as always, thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified when new videos are posted. And bye.